All right, good afternoon, everyone. Trinity John here from Simpler Trading. Going to go ahead and start my broad market analysis. We'll be covering the days of tonight, the 22nd, futures opening here in the part of Florida that I live in, which is central time at five o'clock, which is just about four hours and 50 minutes from now. We'll be covering tonight, the 22nd Sunday into the 27th. And guess what, everyone? Our quarterly candle is coming to a close next Monday, so not too far away, um, which will be interesting. We'll be covering that on some of our charts here, and we'll get started here with this week's major U.S. economic reports and Fed speakers. As you all know, I'm a professional supply and demand trader, and I teach hundreds, thousands across uh, the last uh, 10 years, and I'm very, very happy to be here with you all and to let you know that what I'm about to cover in here is just noise. Uh, believe it or not, this is just a catalyst that pushes price to supply and demand. The advantage that we have of identifying supply and demand is that we are looking at levels where the bigger money is buying and or selling. And we can find that in our blueprints before price gets there. So the idea is that when I go over my charts, either here or in the room, we are going to have a demand zone. We are going to have supply zones. And then I have my indicators that identify these levels. They're called the trendy edges and they are playing field. So what you'll see sometimes on my charts is you have different color lines. Okay. And these lines are more than just a line. Again, you could turn the zone on and then you'll have zones, but these are identifying these playing fields. Now the news is released and whether that news pushes price up into supply or pushes that price into demand, we teach in the room how to identify these levels and then how to trade off them. So we love catalysts and this is why I push this out so that you could see what catalysts are coming, but we do not sit on our hands. We are prepared and we are ready to take action when price gets there. And I would love to teach you how to do that if you've never come by and checked us out at Simpler Trading. So this is what we're covering here, Monday, September 23rd, these are Eastern times. Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic speaks, S&P Flash US Services PMI. And then we have another Fed speaker and then another Fed speaker. So a lot of talking heads, a little bit of PMI mixed in tomorrow on September 23rd. And then on the 24th, again, we have Michelle Bowman speaking. And then we have S&P Case-Shiller Home Price Index and then Consumer Confidence. Wednesday, September 25th, new home sales, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern, Federal Reserve Governor Adriana Kugler speaks. And then on Thursday, it looks uh, like it gets pretty exciting. Matter of fact, when I first opened this up, I was like, wow, there's a lot going on on Thursday. Initial jobless claims, durable goods, GDP, second revision, Federal Reserve Governor Adriana again speaks, Federal Reserve Governor Michelle Bowman. Then we have Jerome jumping on the mic as well at 9.20 p.m. Eastern, or sorry, 9.20 a.m. Eastern. And then John Williams, pending home sales, Federal Reserve Vice, Fair, uh, Vice Chair for Supervision, Michael Barr speaks, Federal Reserve Governor Lisa. So again, lots of Fed speakers, a lot of talking heads this week. Sounds pretty choppy right off the bat. I'm just going to say that. And then Friday, personal income, PCE, core PCE, advanced U.S. trade balance and goods, consumer sentiment final, and then Federal Reserve Governor Michelle Bowman speaks. So very, very busy this week with a lot of speaking. All right. That leads me to my next subject, which is going to be uh, our earnings for this week. And as you guys all know, we're kind of coming towards an end to this, but we still have a couple names out there that look really good. Let's go ahead and go over that. Again, I use X4 finding out who is coming up on the earnings weekly calendar. And I use eWhispers and you guys can see that here. And uh, this is free information that's already out there. As far as my concern going into this week, I always look at this again as a catalyst and I trade into earnings if I see um, an advantage point there looking at supply and demand. The names that I find interesting this week is Micron, and then coming over here on Thursday is Costco. Other than that, these are the only two names that I'm really interested in this week. Maybe KB Homes, okay? So three that I'm interested in, in uh, going, possibly trading into this week, okay? And if you guys want charts on any other earnings, just let me know and I'll be happy to go over those. Now let's get into trading view. 
We're going to come over here. We're going to look at SPY. And I like to look at the bigger picture. Again, this is where, for me, it really calms things down. I like to concentrate on a quarterly chart. That means each one of these candles represents one quarter. And you guys can see I have a lot of notes. So every week I come in here, and they're pretty simplistic notes. Um, and then I like to go over the chart. But the notes um, are really, you know, again, easy. Let me go ahead and read them to you. As far as today is concerned, a new all-time high, and we hit uh, my next target, which was 568, and I've been talking about this week after week. Uh, last week, we had a, um, I talked about the probability of us hitting the 88.7. We hit the 88.7, and then I talked about if we could hold a base over that, we had a 95% chance of a breakout to an all-time high. So again, very happy about that. Uh, my new long-term support is 534 by 510. My demand is at 462. This is in the event if something big happens into elections or maybe into 2025. If we get a, more than a significant pullback, something that really frightens you, this is where I'd be looking to go long at or around 462. Upper targets remain the same, uh, 568, which is where we closed out on Friday up into 580. And then my close support for this week is 562 by 560. So that means basically I'm bullish this week. And if we're to pull back, I'm looking at buying the dip. All right, eight days until the quarterly candle closes. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this really fast. Um, you guys can see that you know this year has been really bullish. Matter of fact, in October, when I was down in Orlando uh, speaking, uh, you know, we came into that dip here and price is pulled up. We created this inside and up and we haven't looked back. And this is a really beautiful continuation of quarterly candles. Yes, we've had pullbacks, but each one of those pullbacks have been bought by the bulls. Um, and again, we have a continuation heading into the end of 2024. These are extension targets here to the upside. You guys could see we ended at my next target at 568. So basically up and above that is 581, 595, and 614. And then we have my support down here that I mentioned in the notes at 534 by 510. And this area here around that 462 level is that inside and up formation on the quarterly chart. Let's go ahead and go over to the QQQ and take a look there. Same thing, no, notes are gonna look the same, pretty straightforward. The quarter candle is no longer an inside candle. So last week it was, the week before that it was, and it was looking pretty ugly. However, it is now a bullish continuation of the last three quarter candles, one, two, three and again this candle is no longer inside it is pushing to the upside when i say inside i am referencing only the previous body of the candle not the wick we do not count the wicks as being inside or outside so again just the body itself so this is up and out and this is now a continuation quarter or and uh please note that we still have eight days until this quarterly candle closes so that you know those things could change we could come right back in and uh continue to be an inside candle but for right now things are looking pretty bullish Targets remain 486, 493, 500 to the upside. Support right now is 468 by 464, and again, eight days until the close. Let's go ahead and move on to the dollar and take a look there. Uh, we'll make this really simple. The dollar, basically, when it is moving up, we're taking a little bit of caution in the market. When it's moving down, we look for the market to continue, continue to look bullish at the moment. Um, there's no reason uh, to be concerned, however, Resistance, if we get a pop, is at 101.6 by 104. And again, I'm not really worried unless the dollar gets up and over this cloud. I'm looking at a weekly time frame, okay? And that cloud is also confluent with 50%. So all I'm doing is identifying a range here, anchoring my Fibonacci's there. And you can see that the cloud and the 50 are right around the same area. So once again, unless we get up and over, uh, this cloud and break the golden Fibonacci. I'm not too concerned about a bounce, but what I would say is if the dollar is bouncing pretty hard and you take note and you're like, okay, well, John, you said these numbers, but it's looking kind of ugly. I mean, obviously we're coming off of our longs. We're pulling up stops, uh, those kind of things. And we're probably intraday trading to the downside. But for right now, things look like they're going to continue to move to the downside in the demand zone. We could see the dollar move all the way down towards 99 for this week. Again, not really concerned unless we get up and above this cloud. Let's go ahead and go into the TNX or the 10-year treasury. 
I'm going to take a look here. Same thing, we came into a little bit of demand. Uh, there's no change here. The only thing that I would tell you is don't be concerned uh, on the 10-year treasury unless we start to see prices get up above this cloud. So a lot really looks like the dollar, and you guys can see that. Now, we are in an inside and up formation, so therefore we do see bounces to the upside, but you can see each bounce keeps hitting that cloud and coming right back down. Um, as I said before, we could see the overall TNX 10-year treasury come all the way down into 3.4 and then 2.9 before the end of the year. Moving on, let's talk about the SKU. Uh, this is a really big deal. Um, I said last week, I think I sent a video out on X and maybe here in the room about the SKU, and it's very important. Uh, we came up and actually made the highest high I've ever seen, and that tells me right away, uh, be extremely cautious, buy some puts uh, 30 to 90 days out. Um, now, me personally, I am building a put position for 2025. It's only going to be 20% of my average net uh, uh, allocation. So, for example, let's say I have 10 grand in options, then I'll build a position that's about $2,000. Uh, and again, I'm focused on 2025. And again, I have started those a couple of weeks ago. I did trim those at 60%, then I added back, and I will not add back to that position um, until I see a little bit higher, higher higher high in the uh, end of the year here, okay? So again, that is the skew. It's super high. I do believe that it could pull back. If it's pulling back, that means the market's probably going sideways to down. Um, on Friday, I wanna say it was at 172, you know, and we're sitting over here at 165. So it did come down a little bit. Um, basically, we've been staying in this box for over a year. Um, as we get lower on the curve, we look to buy calls and or get super bullish up here. We just get a little cautious. I'm not saying that we can't continue up for a couple more days this week, but I am cautious and I'm taking what the market's going to give me. For example, if I get into a trade, let's say it's intraday, it's intraday until proven otherwise, meaning I like to take 40, 50, 100%. And if I can, uh, you know, swing that because I made good profits, then I'll do so. But I am aware that I should be cautious right now. Let's go ahead and move on into the fear and greed index. Um, because of the move last week, we went all the way from a 49 to a 63 in one week. So, you know, hey, listen, we're greedy. Um, this is like an engine, if you will. And I always think like we could still rev this bad boy all the way to here. But once we get here, we'd like to see it cool down. Uh, the market pulls back. It, you know, pulls the rug from traders and so forth. But when we, when we see greed, basically what we're saying is the majority of uh, participants could be considered, uh, you know, they're kind of in this phase where they're just buying calls, you know, and the higher the call ratio to puts, you know, the market's looking at an advantage point of pulling that rug. So you want to be careful. But again, it, where I find a little bit of the differences that I'm seeing right now is that the skew is so high, but the, the greed index is only at 63, and this thing could peg all the way over here. So again, we may pull back a little bit like we did on Friday, but the bulls are relentless, and they come right back in and start buying things up. And so we teeter, right? We teeter between that extreme greed, greed neutral, and then we go back, and then when the, when the skew starts to look elevated, it pulls back a little bit, bulls jump right back in. So... You know, I got to follow the trend. I'm overall bullish and I'm buying the dips in demand zones. And that's why it's so important to listen up to these next couple of charts that I'm going to be showing you in the ES futures and the NASDAQ futures. So I am using the Z24. Uh, we're going to break this down, kind of top down approach really quick. The weekly uh, looks beautiful. It's an inside and up formation. We made that high like I was expecting. Uh, so I feel very satisfied in that. As uh, far as prices to the upside, we could see 59.19 all the way to 60, or uh, yeah, 60, uh, 91.85. Um, and so because of that, um, just be prepared. You know, it, it may not be over. And what I want to see is synergy in the market, though. The NASDAQ is still in a supply zone and then has another supply zone just above that. So it's not like the NASDAQ's at all-time highs and the ES. So there's not synergy there. So you may see that things kind of like, top out go sideways for a bit and the nasdaq gives us a little bit more confidence once it can get over that next uh supply zone and i'll show you that here in a few minutes but far as this goes it looks great and we're above the bull channel as long as we're above 5555 so just know that um 
you know, there's buying opportunity in this uh, subdued great box. And if for some reason I'm wrong, all right, and it's not a buy the dip this week and we get some kind of presser, some sort of news catalyst that pushes us deeper, then I would definitely be a buyer down here towards demand zone. Okay, and you guys can see that there's a green box here and the bull channel is here in the gray. The bull channel, again, just identifying that if we were to pull back because we're in an overall bullish trend, I do expect buyers to come in here and pick up that pace uh, from those levels. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the daily. These are daily triggers that I put on the chart. I use Fibonacci. I use um, supply and demand. And uh, that's how I'm identifying these. Now, inside the room, I teach you how to trade this. We don't just uh, trade it blindly just because it says long or short or anything like that. We are looking for different things to set up on the smaller time frame. But this is the point where you, you know, put these on your chart. Same thing with the levels I just showed you. And just watch them, see how they react. Um, I'm very confident in saying that I pro provide some of the best charts I've ever seen and a lot of our members I've ever seen. So I'm very confident in those and I hope that you are using them and seeing success. Next thing I'd like to ask really quick is make sure you hit that like button uh, and share with your friends and family. Let's go ahead and move on to the four hour. This is very important going into this week as well. Now you may be asking why John do you have different charts uh, on different time frames, and that's because we're all different. Not everybody lives on a weekly chart, but I will tell you that all the levels that I'm providing are very important to the overall success of my trading. So I need to make sure I know where buyers are going to come in because it's really easy to get complacent on a small time frame. And then, you know, you forget, let's say, you know, you're like, oh man, well, I'm going to go short right here. And you try to go short, and all of a sudden, as soon as you go short, you see something like this, and you're like, well, why did that happen? Well, you missed the mark. You know, you didn't notice over here. We were in the bull channel. We were right here where I have my mark at, the 23.6, and perhaps that's why, because we were at the bull channel. So again, these things are really important. I also have a video out there to show you guys how to do this if you want to learn how. Um, I highly recommend it if you're a day trader to just be able to come through here and uh, toggle between up and down and go into your favorite time frames, okay? So resistance, the reason why I have resistance in a gray box and not a red box is because we just broke down from here and the leg out is really not that strong. It'd be different if it looked like this, then I would make this a supply zone. But for right now, it is an inside and down formation. But again, it's just getting started. The biggest thing that I want to note from here uh, and, and really has to do a lot with my overall sentiment this week is that, um, you know, Right now, the price is in the cloud on the four hour EZZ24 or ES, sorry, ESZ24 chart. Uh, up and over the cloud, listen to me, up and over the cloud, I remain bullish, okay? All right, up and over that cloud, I remain bullish. In the cloud, right now, we are in the cloud. I remain cautious until we are back over the cloud, okay, or up above this resistance, or we pull back into the demand zones or some trendy edges that we'll see on our charts tomorrow, okay? So again, I'm overall bullish, trying to buy in demand zones on pullbacks. We have those demand zones. Next thing I wanna point out about the demand zone down here is it has been tested several times, okay? Targets to the upside, again, on this four hour chart, you guys can see where I uh, annotated my Fibonacci extensions is from this range to the high and then I come up with my 23 through 100 here to the right hand side. These are targets for the four hour chart. Let's go ahead and move down into the uh, NASDAQ futures. I'm gonna take a look there and um, on the NASDAQ futures, I'm gonna bring you into the Z24 chart as well. And I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'm getting started a little bit late today because we uh, drove from Florida State University. Went to go see our daughter for her parents' week. Um, that was really fun, exciting. And uh, I'll just put it at this eye-opening. <laughs> they like to have fun in Florida State University. Uh, every weekend, it was a game day. They won. Uh, it was pretty nuts. I'll just put it at that. Keeping me young, my daughter is. Anyway, so let's get over here to the weekly. You guys can see this is the supply zone I'm talking about. The synergy, again, I need to see, I need to see that the NASDAQ can, you know, chew its way through this supply zone. So um, I'm giving a level here for this week. Um, if we can see the NASDAQ up and over 20,162, um, you could say 65 if you like. 
um, then I do believe that synergy continues on the ES futures to the upside. I do believe the NASDAQ can push up here towards 20357 and so forth. The over the overhead supply is up here, and it's wide, 20570 by 21258 But there are ways for us to trade into the supply zone. Again, I teach all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and go into the daily. Uh, these are triggers for the NASDAQ. Go ahead and take note of those. And again, don't just trade them blindly. Have a process around those levels. And then as we move into the four hour, a little bit different than the ES futures. Uh, we're actually above the cloud, so that looks good. Um, I appreciate that, but it's the same thing. If we get up and over this level uh, above here, 20,165, I'll feel better. I do like that we're above the cloud. If we're in the cloud, take caution. And just if we're in the cloud, I'm looking at sideways to down until proven otherwise. And I'd rather buy down here at the demand zone. That demand zone was found on a three hour. This is on a four hour. So you're not going to see it right off the bat. So again, if you want to see that, just go over to the three hour. The next thing I want to talk about is Bitcoin. So let's take a look there. Uh, Bitcoin looking good, guys. You guys know I have a crypto account as well. Um, and I am definitely watching and have Bitcoin. And what I'm looking at here is, uh, like I said before, I'm bullish as long as the green zone holds this is a more of a long-term hold so i'm not trying to trade this in and out every single day but uh it's worked very very well we were predicting that this would be kind of the last leg there for a bit and it was price pulled back into a demand zone then it picked up and went into a supply zone it pulled back i stayed bullish it, it's kind of like the same sentiment that i'm giving you on the es and nasdaq you know it's i'm still bullish I'm buying the dips down here at demand zones, okay? And I bought some more Bitcoin on Friday. I actually did that live in front of the group. Um, you guys got to see that if you're on the camera there, which I know many, many of you were. Uh, but we did hit, if we zoom in here, we hit a trendy edge. And if you guys remember from the beginning of this video, uh, the trendy, trendy edges identify supply and demand zones. So we expected to pull back here. We have a trendy turn signal. As um, far as like near term support for Bitcoin is at around 60,000 by 58,000. I would expect buyers to show up there. We're not really out of the clear though, obviously, until we can build a base above this red box. That'd be around 67,458. Uh, okay. As far as the VIX is concerned this week, it's always the same thing. Um, I believe that you know we're in an area where we can see volatility but it's just like any other chart um, that i show you if we're underneath the cloud i expect yeah, sure we could get a pop but typically what we'll do and you'll notice here is we'll get a pop into the cloud and then we just kind of drop right um i'm not cautious this week meaning well i it's not that I'm not I'm cautious right now, but I'm not really concerned unless prices on the VIX start to bid up and over 19. Uh, matter of fact, I think if they die out, if we get a pop into 17 and a half, 18, they die out. I do believe we're headed back to 1384 pretty soon. Okay. So my overall sentiment for this week is bullish. Uh, with caution, I'm buying demand zones. My overall banners are green. Uh, for the most case and a lot of names that I'm looking at. So again, I want to buy the dip, um, but I want to buy it and understand my risk. And that's exactly what we um, teach and what I like to do here in the Trinity room. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to me. I really appreciate you. Make sure that you give this uh, video a like and uh, we'll see you soon.